Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Mr. Fix-It channel. This is part two of the Polaris 400 rebuild. So I got the engine sitting here on the bench. First thing I want to do is I'm going to get this thing cleaned up and then we'll start taking it apart. Stay tuned. I was sitting out there in the shed one evening, not doing too much or nothing, just kind of staring at the wall. And... Okay, I'm going to start taking this engine apart, but before I just want to show you, this is the reason why we're here. Crankshaft bearings are going. So, I think where I'm going to start here is I'm going to take the pull cover off. We'll get started there. Got a ring of bolts here. These are 10 millimeter. Take those out. Some water did get in there. So we gotta take this nut off and get the flywheel off of there. This is a 22 millimeter. I'm gonna make sure you thread these in pretty far, but not too far, because you might damage something behind there. But you wanna make sure you got enough threads in there that you're not gonna pull the threads out. This is a harmonic balancer puller. I'm gonna use this flat adapter on the end to push on the crankshaft. Now if you get all these bolts threaded in evenly, this should line up right in the center. This in here should line up in the center of the crankshaft there. Have a good look at these magnets, make sure none of them are broken or missing or loose. Check your ring gear teeth, it's all fine. I'm going to take all the parts that I took off of this side and I'm just going to stick them in here on these magnets so they don't get lost. Just like that. Go ahead and pull the starter bendix out. Right, I'm going to go ahead and pull the timing plate off with the stator on there. There's three screws in here. Let me just get in here and kind of pry on this thing just a little bit. It should pop right out. And feed, push this grommet through and feed all the wires through. This is a tool that I made to get that nut off of there. You can buy this. You don't have to make one, but if you do want to make one, that's quarter inch key stock welded to a socket. These are left hand threads, so tighten it to loosen it. I'll go ahead and take the starter out. Now, if you, when you power wash this or if you submerge this in water, this doesn't seal up the greatest and the starter is the lowest point so any water it gets in here goes directly into the starter. So anytime you might suspect water in here, you want to drain this and there is a drain. There's a 10 millimeter bolt right here on the bottom of the motor. This will drain this, the inside of this out. So I'm going to come on the back side of the motor here. Two bolts here to take this bracket holding the starter on. Looks like I'm missing one. Well, there's the starter. You can see there's water in the starter. And this is the problem that these older Polaris have. Not only that, but I did break a bolt right there. Yay. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the this outer cover off. So there's a few bolts in here. There's some 12 millimeters and some 10 millimeters in here. Plus you gotta take this hose off. There's also some 10 millimeters around this outside here. And we'll get all these off. There's one longer one that came out of that hole right there. Alright, as you can see here, this cover is held on by part of this bracket. So I'm going to go ahead and take these three bolts out now. These are 14 millimeter. Might as well, while we're here, take this bracket off too. So you got three three drains in the bottom of this motor. This is the one I showed you earlier. This one is for the balance shaft oil, and this one is the crankshaft. 
crankcase. So if you have any flooding or whatever, you can pull that out and drain the crankcase. So those are your three drains. So before you take this cover off, you'll want to drain the oil out of this, out of this one right here. All right, just have one last look and make sure that all the bolts are out. Give this a few whacks. And there's the balancer shaft and the water pump. Uh, it's a 10 millimeter here. Go ahead and take this loose. All right, now there's a lock washer and then a flat washer in here. So you want to make sure you put those back in the same order they came out. And we can pull the water pump housing out. Check that bearing. Yeah, that bearing is okay. Now we can slide this spacer off. There's an O-ring. And then this washer. And we got the gear. Go ahead and pull the gear off. Now you can see right here how these two dots are lined up. That's how you put it back in. And make sure the two dots are lined up. Give it a little wiggle and it should come off. If not, there is three threaded holes in here that you can put a puller on. Okay, make sure you collect your Woodruff key. There's another Woodruff key right here. We'll go ahead and get that out of there so we don't lose it. Yeah, it seems to be stuck in there pretty good. We'll go ahead and leave it there. Okay, there's still a little bit of oil and some coolant that leaked in there. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. I'm going to take the balancer shaft out. So there's a couple 10 millimeters here for with a bracket. All right, got the, the puller tool on the balancer shaft. There's three holes that are threaded in there. Now I'm going to use this. Now a lot of slide hammers that you can buy or rent from the parts store will have an attachment for this. I'm just going to use this setup here and hopefully this will take it off. I switched to something a little heavier. And there that guy comes out. Now, there's a serious issue going on with this motor and I've been struggling with the engine sucking the oil out of the balance shaft chamber and blown it out the exhaust. Um, in a previous video, there will be a link up here where I replaced this seal because I was thinking that it was the seal that was bad, but actually it's something way more serious and I'll show you that when we get down to it. This was an issue that I've been fighting with this quad ever since I got it. So it's a good thing I'm tearing this thing apart right now. All right, I'm gonna start tearing down the top end. I'm gonna start with the spark plug here. That looks like it's running a little rich. Take off the head bolts, these are 12 millimeter. I'm gonna do this in a crisscrossing pattern while I take it apart. Ooh, I might have to get the impact for this. Oh, that whole stud's coming out. Yep, that stud came out. This got a little tap. I don't look bad in there. Oh man, it needs a rod bearing. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take the four cylinder bolts off. These are 14 millimeter. Okay, we got this oil line that's gotta come off. See, this should be ready to come off, a few taps.
Just checking the connecting rod bearing for play. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and take the piston out. There's a little snap ring in here. You gotta be real careful that this thing doesn't go flying across the room. And try not to damage it. If you don't have another one to put back in it, you'll have to put these back in. So be real careful here. And I lost it. It went somewhere. I don't know where. Should have may have fell down in the crankcase. <laughs> I'm gonna have to get something to tap that through with. It's gonna mac in here. I'm gonna try to fish that clip out of there. Little sucker fell right in there. So if you have a hole in your bench like I do, this is a good time to use it. Just gonna lay this thing flat down on that. Okay, now there's these four, five, what is it, five? There's these five 12 millimeter bolts here that go through the case, and there's also a couple 10 millimeters over here. This one we already took loose because it had the ground cable on it. See, these two were longer, these two are shorter. That's also a, a shorter one. So these two here were longer, these three here were shorter. And there's no bolts in this side. So looks like we can go ahead and split this case. This is the uh, Tusk case splitter. Three good locations here that have threaded holes in them. So we might have to do it from the other side. I'll get this tool set up and I'll be right back. Okay, once you get your tool set up like so, Just gonna start cranking down on this and looking for the case to start splitting apart. Coming apart pretty easy. Just gonna try to help it here. And then it's apart. I'm just gonna take the tool off and we'll continue. Okay, now here's the issue I was talking about. Crankcase is destroyed. Something must have got in here and uh, destroyed it. Now, more than likely this happened before I got it. So this crankcase is no good, unfortunately. You see there's no clearance, so if anything like that, like this wrist, this wrist pin clip, like if you lost one of those down in there and then ran it, this would do that. Along with a multitude of other parts, if you drop down in there, it would damage the case. So just a more close up look here. Here's this half. This is where all my balancer shaft oil is going. So that's unfortunate. It's also cracked right there. See that? Since this case split so easy, I'm just gonna to attempt to uh, drive this crankshaft out of this case half using a rubber mallet. You can see it's not held in there by much. Yeah, look at that. This is where the balancer shaft goes. Something really destroyed this thing. God, I wish I knew what it was. Man, it's a shame. This bearing wasn't on there very tight. I just heated it up right around the inside race. I didn't heat it up a lot, just a little bit. And I took a couple screwdrivers and I tapped them in and I was able to pull this up with these enough to get this puller on here. There's another one of them spacers right here with an O-ring inside there. Spacer, there's that O-ring between here, like that. But unfortunately, this crankshaft needs rebuilt. <laughs> now this is a point where panic really sets in because you were completely unprepared for all the damage inside your engine. Like I just ordered the crank bearing, I just ordered, I just ordered bearings and seals and gaskets. I didn't get connecting rod bearing or wrist pin or not. I, so I'm going to have to uh, look up some parts and get some parts on the way before I can even get this engine back together. So I guess the project is on hold for the moment. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. 
<laughs> and don't be afraid to fix it. Thanks for watching.